David Klineski is a lithium industry veteran with stints at Abel Marley and Piedmont Lithium. He is now on the recycling side of the business. David heads up Serba Solutions. David, welcome to Keiko. Great. Thank you very much, Michael. Appreciate the time. Looking forward to speaking with you today. Catch us up with Serba Solutions. I believe that the company is a merger of three businesses. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great question, and we um, you know we're really excited uh, to really bring three really strong entities together in creating service solutions. You know, taking uh, the largest collector, processor, and logistical network for the end of life batteries, and, and bringing that together into the most I would say the most trusted and comprehensive provider uh, to be able to recycle batteries and and develop new materials that can go into industry. So we brought together, you know, retrieve technologies, battery solutions, and the heritage, uh, battery recycling group together to really have uh, everything under one roof and, and practice that circularity, uh, and batteries together. And that's where Serbia came, uh, came under. Can you uh, talk about uh, the business now? Uh, you know, there's a couple of people uh, that are going into uh, the battery recycling space. Um, how do you weigh the aspects of the business? Is it, uh, you know, is it uh, IP? Is it uh, relationships? Is it logistics? Uh, you know, what do you really need to uh, put together for uh, being in this uh, battery recycling space? Yeah, no, I, I think initially, if you look at the industry today, and it's it's still a fairly fairly new industry, especially the lithium ion space, but logistics and that collection network really, you know, makes up the majority of, of the differentiation that's out there today, being able to have a network of capabilities like like we have in Serba to, to you know, coast to coast coverage on being able to collect batteries, transport them safely. Um, you know, initially package them and transport them safely to to our facilities is absolutely critical. You know, as we look to to kind of build out and regionalize our business, um, you know, we've been we've been doing this for over 20 plus years, uh, being able to to bring these batteries into the the collection network and the logistic network we have, and then you know taking them to our facilities and processing them safely through our operations. You know, to date, uh, we're gonna you know, in 2022 we're gonna process over 50 million pounds of batteries. Uh, through our facilities, you know, and, and again, up to date, we've processed over 50 million pounds of lithium ion batteries, uh, just a really impressive kind of track record of being able to do that safely and work with our customers to ensure that we meet all their needs to, to move batteries, uh, you know, from their facilities or from their operations to, to our plants to be processed safely. Where do you have to be for those uh, customers, David, uh, you know, I was thinking that uh, it would really kind of evolve around uh, what the uh, major automakers are doing and, uh, you know, having those uh, close contracts with them. Or do you see that uh, you're going to need uh, something much more diffuse in terms of being able to kind of uh, process and collect uh, batteries? Yeah, look, I think for the long term success of our business and, and the market itself in general, right, customers are always going to be at the center of everything we do and having those capabilities to be able to, you know, work with them on what their network looks like. And, and again, for an auto OEM, for example, what is their dealership network look like? What are you, you know, partnering with some of the auto recyclers out there? And then also, you know, you've got a tremendous amount of activity with the, the battery manufacturers producing batteries and they have a lot of material that that ends up as not being able to be used into a battery cell or, or a battery pack itself uh, going into a vehicle, for example, and, and having that network to be able to to collect that material from their their facilities, process that um, and then really upgrade that material into something that can be reused again. Those are all of the things that we have today at Serba, and we're really trying to continue to, to push forward on how we you know, build on those capabilities and also continue to come up with some innovative solutions for our customers. What's your financing situation, David? I recall in another interview uh, that you did say uh, that you were uh, profitable uh, with uh, the uh, companies uh, that have come together. But um, I just imagine that uh, the scale that you're operating at now and what is anticipated to be the scale in a couple of years right now is going to be, uh, you know, you're going to have to be a really uh, different type of business. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and look, we've been, you know, recycling batteries for, like I mentioned, you know, 20 plus 30 years or so. Um, and our expertise has really allowed us to, to make sure we've got, you know, great network of logistics to be able to move materials. We've got a, a great set of operations where it allows us to process material safely and profitably. And, and you mentioned, right, we're profitable. We've been profitable for many years um, and we continue to, to look forward in, in what that brings to our business and, and what we can do in terms of going from, you know, say six facilities today that we have operational in, in North America 
and expanding that, you know, to well over 13 facilities over the next four years. So really ramping up our, our operational footprint um, to be able to collect batteries, to be able to transport them safely and process them into these, these upgraded materials that can go back into the battery space. And we, you know, we've got a very strong plan in front of us that we believe we can continue to be profitable, um, you know, generate significant cash flow for our shareholders, um, and, and then really create a, an attractive investment uh, kind of portfolio for, for our shareholders going forward as well. Where does the tech come for uh, improving uh, process at CERBA? Is it all in-house or do you do something with vendors, uh, alliances, uh, research papers? Yeah, it's a combination. We've got some really talented individuals that we work with, um, you know, in our organization. The Heritage Group has an has a, a extremely strong research organization that we're leveraging, being able to take their capabilities and identify, you know, opportunities where we can really process, you know, the materials in a much more efficient way. Um, and create technology that, that enables us to differentiate ourselves. I think we've also been able to, you know, to partner with, um, with other companies out there that have technology that we believe, you know, could be a good fit for this industry. And, and again, there's some parallels, obviously, with refining of different uh, metals in the industry today that's out there. We're, we're going to use some of that technology and, and leverage some of that expertise that we've also been able to, to hire and bring in-house to, to really make sure that we've got a differentiated you know, product offering and portfolio for our customers going forward in the future. Let's turn to macro. Uh, David, is the world going to be able to make enough lithium? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of companies out there that are going to sure give it the, the best try they can. And, and, you know, I think there's the lithium. I always used to get asked the question, is there enough lithium in the world to, to electrify, you know, the transportation fleet? The answer is yes, there is. There's lots of lithium out there. I think now what companies are doing is, is really trying to, to chart a path on how, one, they can extract it sustainably. Um, and that's where recycling comes in as well. It's a, it's a resource, right? We look at recycling as a resource as well and being able to, to be a part of that supply, that supply chain that helps close the gap of, of what's out there. Um, but again, it's going to it's going to require a partnership across the entire industry of companies that are doing, you know, new extraction and, and new, you know, new mining techniques where they're going to be able to extract, you know, minerals from the ground sustainably. Obviously, lithium is a key component. Um, and then and then companies like ourselves really focused on how do we ensure that, you know, we take as much of that material that's already been extracted from the earth and, and, and you know, process all of that through our through our facilities and ensure that none of that ends up back in the landfill. Um, and we can return that back over and over again, right? That's the nice thing about most of these metals like lithium, they can be reused over and over again in uh, in the supply chain and not just have a, a single use application. Uh, David, I'm gonna lean on your uh, chemistry background and then just kind of going back in the past, how bullish are you in terms of uh, new processes like uh, direct uh, lithium extraction uh, or other ways? Um, it seems when uh, you're talking to uh, industry veterans, uh, the people that are closer to the businesses uh, that uh, operate and are developing uh, lithium mines, the large ones that uh, these things are very hard and especially hard at uh, particular scale. So um, yeah. as far as, uh, you know, uh, revolutions in terms of being able to produce more lithium, that might be hard. Yeah, look, I think over time, you know, there's been a lot of work on direct, you know, DLE type, type technologies, right? So there's been a lot of work out there over the last probably 10 years in that space. I think obviously, you know, a number of companies have made some, some advances, not only in the, the absorption technology, but also membrane technology to be able to extract lithium. So I think there's, you know, again, there's a chance for, for that technology to definitely um, see, its, see its time in the, in the spotlight. I think like, like most uh, chemists or engineers, you know, it's usually it's time and money, right? And, and things, problems get solved and, and uh, solutions are, are developed for these kinds of technologies. So, you know, I think it will definitely be, there'll be a place for it. I think the cost curve and the timing um, you know, for these technologies to be commercialized are, are something that really need to continue to be studied and understood. Um, you know, obviously the, the traditional uh, people out there that are, that are processing lithium through some of the known resources and the known technologies obviously have, you know, a little bit of a head start, right? They, they know how to process material. It's just a matter of building plants and putting, uh, you know, steel in the ground, so to speak. So those technologies are a little bit lower risk, but, um, you know, I think everybody needs to pitch in and, and really, you know, try to figure out ways that we can continue to, to create a domestic supply chain clearly for North America and ensure that, you know, we, all the investment 
announced and the, the statements that have been made for states on converting, you know, from ICE to, to electric vehicles, that, that can be realized by, by these minerals being extracted effectively through the, through the earth. What is the one trend in battery material space that people are just not paying enough attention to, David? I think quality is really important, right? That, that tends to get overlooked. Um, I think a lot of people will come out and say, oh, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to build a lithium hydroxide plant or a lithium carbonate plant. Um, you know, these are, these are really difficult processes to build and, and perfect. Um, you know, everybody has to, to really understand that, you know, most, most battery producers and, and obviously most car companies, they want things to be perfect because you can't have any, any risk of downstream issues going forward. So I think some people tend to kind of forget the, and overlook that, you know, the quality of a material is really critical. I know we talked a little bit early on about, you know, people always ask me about lithium being a commodity and, and, and things like that. I think that's something that you have to be a little bit careful with because, you know, it's, it's a specialty chemical. It's not easy to produce and that level of quality that's required for these, these specific applications. So, you know, we can always go back and forth, whether it's a commodity or not and, and how it's being, being viewed. Uh, but it's just a difficult process and something I think that, that people need to continue to watch that quality aspect of, of how we make materials. Lastly, David, milestones of service solutions over the next 12 months. Yeah, we've got a lot, uh, a lot going on. Um, it's it's an exciting time for our company. We're really, we're really thrilled to be a part of this this industry. Um, you know, we're going to have some announcements about just expanding our footprint, not only um, what we currently have and, and some of the upgrading we're going to do there to expand capacity, but also a couple of new sites that we'll be announcing here. Um, one probably in the next couple of weeks, and another one um, most likely for sure before the end of the year. So we've got. You know, again, additional facilities. I mentioned the the amount of facilities that we're going to be putting in the ground over the next, you know, the next four years or so. Um, so there'll be the next 12 months. You'll see announcements on new facilities, on uh, different product offerings that we're going to be bringing to the market based on some of the the work we've been doing over the last, you know, six to 12 months in the company. So that's uh, something to, to look out for. And, and just the other thing is some really strategic partnerships that we're developing today. Uh, that we're really deep in the process of, of working closely with some of the companies in this industry. And we're excited about uh, some of the work we're doing there. We're excited about the trust that they've, they've given our company. Uh, and, and again, what we believe is a long-term partnership that we're going to be creating with them going forward. David, I appreciate your time. Great, Michael. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate uh, getting the opportunity to talk to you. He's David Kladeski. He's CEO of Service Solutions. My name is Michael McRae, and you're watching Kickle Mining.